Hello and welcome to Red Book Joy. Today I've got another reading ramble. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. If you're not new, welcome back for more rambling nonsense. And today I've got a few things to talk about. First up, missing video from YouTube. One of my videos went missing off YouTube. And I just wanted to say, um, can't find it. Can't find any reasons to why it's been removed. Um, I've lost all the views and comments on there, which is really upsetting because one comment, <coughs> I can still see the notifications for the comments and then you click on them and it says no comment found. One of them was from an 11 year old booktuber and I can't see what he was saying. He's called the Audible King, I think. So if you're out there, Audible King, I'd love to hear what your thoughts were on my middle grade video because you are the person who I make these videos for. You're my target audience. So I'd really love to hear what you have to say good or bad <laughs> so yeah um if you can um if you commented on my middle grade video before and i didn't get back to you please go over to it i've reposted it comment again and i will endeavor to comment back i've been a bit slack in replying to comments lately because i've just been super busy but i will try to do better honestly especially after that i'm really sad that those comments are gone without me responding anyway but yeah youtube uh, friends out there this is a reason to keep your archive footage because yeah it just disappeared no rhyme or reason and if you notice it's quite sunny up here at the moment in the uk i'm really kind of feeling happier with the sun come out it's still freezing there are storms in lots of parts of the uk at the moment and lots of people have been without power and all sorts of things and i do think about them we've been very lucky here in london it's just been cold just been cold um no snow no ice no storms a bit windy but other than that um, and the sun's come out and I found some daffodils or I didn't my partner found them in the local farmers market on Sunday and they're just opening up so I'm starting to feel a bit hopeful about the uh, turn of the seasons I do love winter but you I'm always ready for a change of season when whichever season I'm in I like the change of seasons so those sorts of things are making me feel good at the moment um I've been noticing so many people are reading um the Odyssey and the Iliad at the moment it seems to be a bit of a trend on YouTube and on Bookstagram actually. Lots of people are reading classics, which I'm loving as someone who studied classics. I would never call myself a classicist because you know, my <clears throat> reading of ancient languages was never really beyond sort of GCSE level. I did two years of Latin, two years of ancient Greek, um, and that's not enough of either to really read in those languages. But um, yeah, I was just going to recommend something for people who are reading the classics at the moment. On the BBC, um, it might be on the BBC Sounds app, but BBC Radio 4, there is a classicist called Natalie Haynes, and she used to be a comedian, and she has um, a podcast, well, it's a, TV, it's a radio show, but you can download it as a podcast. You probably get it on Spotify, and it's called Natalie Haynes Defends the Classics. It's very funny, and she takes a particular classic classical author, um, so juvenile or... Um, Homer or whatever and she'll um, do some she'll chat about them um, and she'll also see how it fits into modern life really really good I'd highly recommend it um, I'll put the link in the description box if it is on Spotify um, so if you have recently got an interest in the classics I know Shelley Swearingen and Elizabeth over at Bukans and Books I know you might be interested in this so I'm going to link that in the description box below so reading update um, well since we last spoke I've um, basically finished the storm a storm of sisters which is the advanced the arc net galley arc of michelle harrison the, the pinch of magic series fourth book i'll get that out eventually um but i'm going to do a review of it a full review of it but it's gorgeous it's just as good as the rest of the books in the series honestly i love it i don't just love it as a children's book series i love it as a book series it's wonderful magical um mysteries and the plot are always really good this one i love it because it's got a wintry setting but also based on the high women by alfred Noyes. so i don't know if it's well known elsewhere but here in the uk everyone has studied the high women in primary school ever since i was a kid and they still study it now because it's a brilliant poem and i always remember the line the moon was a ghostly galleon and like i love that so whenever i look at the moon and i see it um floating and like sort of you see a bright full moon and you see clouds in front of it i always think of that line and i'm not a big poetry fan but this book is based on loosely based on that there's a high woman there's a crystal ball there's a ghost <coughs> it's wonderful absolutely loved it 
I also finished Pets by Aquake Amazie. Uh, it's my first Aquake Amazie book, and uh, Aquake Amazie is a non binary Nigerian author who has written some very, very popular books here on YouTube. Uh, Pets is a YA novel all about um, a character called Jam and her best friend Redemption who live in a society where monsters are supposedly had been prevalent in the society but have been banished and the people in the society that fought against them and vanquished these monsters are known as angels. Um, tied into that Jam's mother is an artist and Jam's mother paints a picture of what looks to be a monster and pet it, it called and um, this monster comes to life only Jam can see it and it's called Pet uh, initially. Mm, that's not quite true but I don't want to give any spoilers away but this monster comes to life and actually says there is a monster amongst you and we have to go hunting for it and it's a really um, interesting look at identity how appearance can be deceptive I really really enjoyed it I borrowed it from Scribd um, and I had um, a kin an audio version from Scribd and a Kindle version from the library um, and I've just had on hold Freshwater by Aquake Amazie and that's just come through on the Libby app as well. It's interesting the Libby app, I've put, I went through and watched everybody's best of 2021 videos and put, wrote a list down, I've got a huge list of books that I loved from people's recommendations and given that they're people that I respect on YouTube, um, I've put them down as want to read. Now given my book buying ban, I have gone through Libby and Scribd uh, and tried to put holds on them at the library. Some books like Shuggy Bane I will probably get from the library in about um, a year's time <laughs> but some books are coming up uh, on my Libby app um, so as they come up I'm having to make room for them so that I can read them in the allotted time because they are um, being waited for by lots and lots of people so um, Freshwater has just come up so that's something I want to plan to read in the next few weeks. I'm currently reading Red Wall by Brian Jacks with the amazing Gemma from Gem of Books who I absolutely am um, having a whale of a time reading this with. This is a lovely book. I absolutely love anthropomorphic um, fiction, right, where animals, um, animal societies etc. And Red Wall is a famous children's series set around Red Wall Abbey which is um, home to an order of peaceful order of mice and they get under attack by a rat um, called Clooney who is really ferocious. We're not far into it, uh, about 15 chapters in but loving it so far. Another book I finished back in December and I forgot to talk about is The Berlin Girl which was sent to me by the lovely Emily over at Novel Novels. It came to me like a care package on one of the worst days, the end of term when I thought I might actually collapse from exhaustion and illness and I came home to a care package from Emily which was um, The Berlin Girl and up room girls this is still tbr i will read this at some point but the berlin girl i got straight stuck straight into and i don't know why i didn't talk about it in my last reading ramble because i really really enjoyed it it was about uh berlin set in berlin pre first second world war pre second world war and it's all based on foreign journalists who were there at the time the foreign female journalists and the author did a lot of research into like reading the biographies of foreign female journalists who were in berlin at the time and they could all see and they were all trying to report and putting themselves in danger trying to report what the Nazi party were doing and the rise of the Nazi party. It's a really interesting perspective on that. So I really enjoyed this one. So thank you, Emily. That was so kind. Something that I'm still reading because I just got uh, to take it out again from the library is Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. Um, so it's an audio that I got out from Libby. Now I happen to be on Libby going through and reserving loads of books and they've got a section where it's like, you can get it now and it's normally like a six month wait or whatever and they had Invisible Women. But So I downloaded it but what I didn't realise was you didn't have three weeks to listen to it, you had less because it's like a special deal, like you can get this now but you have to listen to it really quickly. So I'd listened to like 80 odd percent of it and um, then I had to send it back, it got automatically returned. but. I put a hold on it and it's just come back through again so I'm literally on the last chapter so I feel um, the very actually I'm on the afterword I'm not even on the last chapter and it's wrapping up this amazing book all about the gender data gap if you don't know anything about the gender data gap it is that the majority of data in the world that supports our infrastructure in cities medicine all the data that we know about disasters and how they affect people and the data and what they do to rebuild 
societies after a disaster, all sorts of absolutely devastating facts about how socialisation of women in particular places meet, affects them affects their lives and women are dying because of this gender data gap because data is the default white male data that we're all following and actually um, that we're all sort of subject to. The most obvious example of which is cars and safety in cars. Uh, crash test dummies were male for uh, majority of um, sort of testing of car safety so women are more likely to die in car crashes because of that then uh, when they've said they've got female crash test dummies they've actually just got smaller male crash test dummies so things like that um, and the design of cities and it's just a fascinating fascinating book and I wish I'd taken more notes when I was listening to it but um, it did make me very very righteous and angry um, and issues that don't affect men which do affect women and are never considered, and women <clears throat> are the uh, atypical um, part of humanity, even though we represent 50% of us, 50% of humanity is female, but the default data is male, which is a travesty. Women are dying because of it. So yeah, I'd highly recommend that. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. I'm also listening to Anne of Avonlea. So this is the second book in the Anne of Green Gables um, sort of series. Uh, I listened, to, I read it years and years ago as a child, but this is a reread, but I don't remember much about it apart from occasional characters and things that might have happened. But I'm reading it as part of the lovely Anne Along group. If you want to take part, I will leave a link in the description box to Emily's channel. She's running the Anne Along and she'll add you to the group if you want to join. It's a lovely group. So because I'm doing buddy reads and I want to do another one with a friend of mine who's on holiday at the moment and she wants to read Yours Cheerfully by AJ Pierce, which I also want to read, I've decided to be gentle with myself. I have been reading War and Peace <laughs> very, very slowly since November. Um, I am going to finish War and Peace. I'm not going to DNF it. Definitely going to finish it. I've got through the first two volumes of War and Peace. I'm exactly halfway through the text. So um, my plan is I'm going to stop now I've read the first two volumes and go back to the next volume as if it was a separate book um, at Easter, probably, uh, which is when I'm off work and I can devote some time to it. I just feel I need a break from it. Um, if I was just reading this and only this, I would finish it um, probably, well, I've got about 600 pages 650 pages left to go so I would finish it in probably two weeks if it was the only thing I was reading but I don't want it to be the only thing I'm reading I really need to read other things I've got a real hankering to read other things and part of my no plan plan this year is to follow my mood so I feel like stopping at the end of volume two is a really good place to just bring it to a halt and you might think you're gonna forget everything well I have been annotating so I have got lots of notes I am going to do a review video I'm going to try and film it this weekend of the first two volumes of War and Peace so that I can remember my thoughts and where I was and the other thing I'm going to do which I wanted to do this year is I'm going to write about it in my book journal so here's my book journal I uh, made put things on the cover um, it's basically completely empty inside <laughs> because I started uh, making a beautiful cover for it and I started thinking about what I wanted in it and then I just went off this whole tangent of looking at people's reading journal videos on YouTube. So um, yeah, I kind of made that little stamped header and distressed it a bit. This beautiful um, postcard is from The Unexpected Gypsy who I love and follow on YouTube and I've just put on here it says um all the fairy tales so and that little sticker and put it on there so i'm gonna finish off setting up my book journal i'm gonna write down where i am in war and peace and what's happened so far and characters and things that i want to remember and hopefully i won't forget everything completely so when i go back to it in april i can pick up where i left off right i think that is a long enough ramble for even me um i hope you enjoyed it it was a real ramble wasn't it real collection of things but that's why I've called it a reading ramble so if you liked my re rambling nonsense and you might you've not been here before and you would like more of this rambling nonsense maybe consider clicking subscribe please do leave a comment every comment helps and I'm really going to try and do better with answering comments quickly um, so hopefully I will see you again here soon bye <laughs>